Hey guys, Zane from the Infinite Jukebox here with another album review, and today I wanted to talk about the new Glass Beach record, Plastic Death. With 2019's The First Glass Beach album, we got, as you may have guessed, The First Glass Beach album, the debut studio album from Glass Beach, a group that immediately established themselves as one of the premier coming indie emo, whatever you want to consider them bands, for the then coming 2020s. And then the 2020s came and we got like zero info on a proper follow-up LP until late 2023 when we finally got a sophomore studio album announced, a sophomore studio album that would eventually be titled Plastic Death, and now here we are. I think it's important to note just how much was on the line for Glass Beach as a band leading up to this. I mean, between them developing almost immediately a cult-like fan base, as well as introducing once touring only guitarist Lane Smith as an official core recording member of the band, there's a lot of change going on through the band's place in the music world, as well as their place within their own personal lives. I mean whole different scenario from where they were at just a few years ago, and because of that I feel like it would almost make sense if they had leaned further into the indie influences that they had dabbled in on their debut album, the sort of quirky power pop influenced and emo influenced sounds that really got them their fan base in the first place. And that would be fine, going in a more formulaic direction. However, Plastic Death does the absolute opposite of that, and I mean, you know what, that is the way cooler direction to go in, I'm not gonna lie. In fact, Plastic Death is about as non-traditional as it gets, especially when you compare to where Glass Beach initially started out musically, but nonetheless, this record is just about as far away from a sophomore slump as you can get as well. In fact, it's probably one of the most daring indie albums that's come out over the course of the past few months. There is an argument to be made that the center of focus here is none other than front person J, because, well, you know, front person, that kind of tends to imply that they are the center of a band, I know. Really great analysis on this channel, that's what you're subscribed for, I'm sure. As a vocalist, Jay trades in traditional range for just pure, raw, unfiltered emotion, and that's something that I would say works in the record's favor. I have seen a lot of people dislike their vocal style overall based on their first album, as well as the much more fresh reactions to this record. But all I can say is that there are plenty of examples throughout the history of indie music of less traditionally talented vocalists doing better work than most traditionally talented vocalists. I mean, look at David Berman's time with the Silver Jews, or for a more recent example, Isaac Wood's stint with Black Country New Road. There's a ton of vocalists throughout music history that aren't good, that are also among the best vocalists throughout music history based on personality alone, and I think that Jay falls into that category. Plastic Death is often made a significantly more dynamic experience because of the various styles and tones that Jay very, very naturally pulls out of themselves as a performer. I mean, you have more anthemic kind of tracks like the CIA that are just given an extra degree of energy because of this passionate performance work from them. Elsewhere, you have cuts that have more soaring moments like cul-de-sac, for example, and their vocals really contribute to the absolute power and emotional striking qualities in those songs as well. I feel like as a whole they are just a perfect fit for this band. They are beyond fit to lead Glass Beach. There are admittedly some moments where I do think that their vocals just go a bit too far in an unexpected direction and that's coming from me, a person who absolutely adores it when bands go in unexpected directions. But nonetheless you have moments such as the vocals towards the end of Slip Under the Door that are kind of black metal adjacent in nature, and I feel like even then their voice is just a touch out of place. Yeah, I know that this is an album that's constantly reshaping itself throughout its runtime, but the vocals a couple steps away from Dark Throne I feel like might be a bit too esoteric, even by this record standards. Now, with that being said, even the more odd directions that Jay goes in vocally from time to time have purpose, even if I don't necessarily think that they're executed the best. I mean, the aforementioned passage in Slip Under the Door has such enigmatic and brutal lyrics like take control of your property, mutilation, autonomy, and those dark, somewhat vicious songwriting examples, they kind of have to have some sort of brutal vocal delivery behind them. Now, I'm not saying 
that I think the vocals in that song in particular, I should say that part of that song in particular, are inherently better because of it. However, I do think that it, at the very least, makes sense that you would go in a more, you know, metal, black metal-esque kind of direction for at least that singular track. My point is that no matter how off-kilter I think this record can get from time to time, which honestly isn't very, I still do recognize that every single thing that's being done here has reason behind it. It's just kind of an example of the lyrics fitting the vocals when the vocals don't necessarily fit the instrumentals. And I mean, hey, you know what? That's not the worst thing in the world, if I'm being totally honest. There's still a good amount to appreciate there. And, you know, overall, I think that Jay, as a vocalist, has a super high success rate in terms of how much passion they put into their work. And the pure, raw emotion in their vocals is constantly there, no matter what track you're talking about. And it's because of that that I feel pretty confident in such Jay as one of the most distinctive and one of the most interesting front people within indie music in general at the moment. All of that being said, it is worth noting that Plastic Death is also hugely defined by a lot of its instrumental qualities as well. This record was certainly an opportunity for Glass Beach to really demonstrate an expansion upon the initial sounds that they first showed off on their debut several years ago, and I think that as a band they definitely recognized that and applied themselves to that as much as they possibly could with so many different influences here that they're taking up that haven't been seen on anything they've put out up to this point besides this record. Some progressive rock and progressive electronic instrumentation, some more jazz-tinged, especially like smooth jazz and cool jazz kind of stuff that sort of came out of the jazz fusion scene of the 70s. I think that in general there are a lot of really interesting sounds here that I would have never expected from Glass Beach, but I think they handle perfectly. William White and Jonas Newhouse on drums and bass respectively make for a fantastic rhythm section. They have these really subtly complex performances and add a lot to cuts like Guitar Song, for example, with this slowly increasing tempo and this usage of very odd and generally really complicated time signatures that I'm not knowledgeable enough in music theory to be able to comment on too terribly much. But my point is that they really do act as more than just a standard backbone for the rest of the band. They are entirely impressive instrumentalists in their own right, and they really do get a chance to shine as long as you actually properly lend an ear to the record. Similar things could be said about Jay and Lane Smith's guitar work on tracks like Puppy, for example. Their constant embracing of math rock, and if you want to call this a real genre, math pop, influences is great as they heavily utilize that rigidity that comes with those particular genres, that heavily progressive rock and metal oriented sound being applied to their own unique brand of slower and more emotional indie rock that happens to also be pretty triumphant in a bittersweet manner in some of its more intense and powerful moments. The previously mentioned Newhouse and Jay also contribute some key work to the record throughout, some synthesizers, some pianos, so on and so forth. And although those are easily the, the most subtle instrumentals here, I really do feel like they add a lot of texture to tracks like 200, for example, thus adding a lot of in-depth emotion throughout them. It feels like they are because of those synths and because of those older electronic influences, the kind of influences that you would expect to hear from late 70s and early 80s progressive electronic artists, I feel like they really do have a sense of depth to them that they wouldn't have without. The actual tone of the instruments found throughout Plastic Death is a key element to its success as well. I mean, a large chunk of this album is very clean sonically, and it's worth noting that this record has a pretty phenomenal production overall. This allows a lot of the smoother moments instrumentally to pair nicely with a lot of the lovely melodies on tracks like Motions, for example. And because of that, a lot of the different influences that they em embrace here for the first time, as well as some of their older influences, they get the chance to actually shine. I mean, some of those jazz influences really do get easy to pick up on with the fact that, again, a lot of smooth tones on here. 
a lot of sounds that kind of are adjacent to, again, like I said, the sort of 70s jazz fusion kind of stuff that you would expect from that era of the genre. And meanwhile, a lot of those melodies still get the shine because it's not like they're caked in distortion or anything like that. And because of that, a lot of the classic power pop influences that they've been working with ever since they first debuted years ago are also very much valid players here in terms of how the sound of this record is shaped. And really, in the end, it's this giant fusion of progressive pop and rock with jazz and power pop and a lot of more semi-improvisational but still extremely structured tendencies and a lot of their artsy roots just all coming together into one giant piece of art that makes Glass Beach such an interesting and standout band within music right now. And it's also what makes Plastic Death easily their best record to date. The songwriting throughout Plastic Death also feels like a pretty major step up from the band's previous works as well, though again, you could really say that about most things here. Whereas the band previously had a quirky and at times very contemporary sense of self-awareness via tracks and titles like Classic J Dies and Goes to Hell Part 1, something that was often used to be a somewhat humorous guise to disguise a lot of melancholic and highly bittersweet songwriting at times, Plastic Death feels extremely enigmatic, especially when you compare a lot of the lyricism here to prior Glass Beach works. Tracks like Whale Fall and Rare Animal have extremely poetic yet deeply cryptic lines like feeding on the body of a whale as I lay awake and tomorrow was all smoke and mirrors respectively for those two songs that pretty perfectly conveys the bittersweet feeling of the record as a whole but at the same time is nonetheless shrouded in mystery in a way that I think is really gripping and makes this album heavily worth re-listens based on lyrical content alone and that's just heavily expanded upon by the fact that musically this record is great as well. But as you may expect from some of the sample lines that I just gave you right now, a lot of the songwriting here is very personal, and in turn, it becomes pretty impenetrable for the average listener, and I can understand why for some people that would be a bit of a turnoff, especially for individuals that really want something a bit more approachable from a lyricism standpoint, from a songwriting standpoint, so on and so forth, but really there are moments here where things become a bit more blunt, and in those few moments you can kind of get a proper glimpse of the absolute emotional devastation that a lot of plastic death carries behind it. When the track The Killer ends with the lyrics, as you decide through killer eyes, taken by your trembling trigger hand, in gentle jaws the barrel of your 22, you are given perhaps the heaviest line on the entire record from an emotional standpoint, and again, you're also given a proper demonstration, a much less impenetrable demonstration, of just how deeply heartfelt the entirety of this record is. As previously mentioned, Jay's very impassioned vocal performance throughout the majority of this record is really what defines the emotional weight behind a lot of Plastic Death. This album would not be the same without any other vocalist. In fact, it wouldn't be the same without any of the musicians on this record, but I digress. That being said, the evolution of songwriting here, which is so much stronger than what we've seen from Glass Beach in the past, it's just a majorly defining quality of showing just how much this band has grown in a relatively short period of time. Plastic Death is a phenomenal sophomore studio album from Glass Beach, a band that had a lot to live up to after a much-loved debut five years ago. There were a variety of directions that the band honestly could have taken themselves in at this particular point. It's not like they're especially defined by any singular sound, seeing as they're still a very recent and young band. However, with all of the change going on within the own ranks of the band, the addition of a new proper studio member, and other different factors, especially with the length it's been since their initial debut album, I don't think anyone would have really blamed them if they just further leaned into their influences, the kind of bands that sound like them, except, you know, 20 years prior, 25 years prior, I'm talking bands like the Brave Little Abacus, the Dismemberment Plan, etc, etc, the kind of bands that influenced this group, surely, I would imagine, at least. I don't think anyone would have blamed them if they just properly leaned into those influences, and instead they chose to just say fuck that and became something else entirely, and I admire that to no end. 
Plastic Death proves that Glass Beach, as a band, are an absolute force to be reckoned with at this point, and if they continue in this direction, I will be pleased, and if they continue in some other direction, well, they've obviously shown that they can take a pretty sharp turn and still be absolutely amazing, if not better than they've been in the past, so no matter what, I'm excited. Plastic Death ends with the fading note of a synth that is the final moment on the entire record, and I will say this. I do feel like that final moment is sort of representative of this record as a whole, a deeply emotional and powerful flicker that seems to just sort of disappear about as quickly as it actually arrived on the scene in the first place. I'm just happy that the band itself is still sticking around and that they will continue into the future with uh, whatever in the name of God they do next. I'm going to listen to it no matter what. I'm going to give this record four stars out of five. And with that being said, that is the end of this album review. I've been Zane from the Infinite Jukebox. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.